Thank you, Sydney, and thank you, Ken. You two really made a great job with the whole wizard. Natalie, I will give you one guess about what our next presentation will be. And I will even give you a hint. It is our best and greatest module that saves tremendously on machining time, and no other CAD system has anything approaching it. Well, that is not hard to guess. I'm machining. Bingo! Our next lecture is about eye machining. Anthony Calderon, our CTO, and Chris Calderon, his brother, the eye machining wizard developer, and our great programmer, senior VP of algorithms, Doron Osovlansky, were the eye machining development heroes. Anthony and Chris both work very hard from our Newton, Pennsylvania office and technology center. You know, Linda, let me share with you something interesting about Anthony and Chris. They both worked in their father's machine shop from the time they were 12 and 14, running his first CNC machine. So actually, they have been working with CNC machine their whole lives. And it doesn't stop there. Now they are working together with Michael Venetsky, our amazing senior VP of product management on the new eye turning technology, testing it on our Haas ST30 lathe at our New Time Pennsylvania Technology Center. So, Anthony, please tell us again the amazing secrets of eye machining that we are never tired of hearing again and again. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining the SolidCam World 2022 Virtual Summit. My name is Anthony Calderon, and I am the Chief Technical Officer at SolidCam. Today's presentation is on SolidCam eye machining, our unbelievable cycle time savings and unmatched tool life extension, using our eye machining 2D and eye machining 3D technology with our technology wizard. Our first product we released was eye machining 2D, the revolution in CNC machining. Some of the reasons for that you can see on the left. Our technology offers increased productivity due to shorter cycles up to 70% or more, dramatically increased tool life, unmatched hard material machining, outstanding small tool performance, four axis and mill turn eye machining. We have the highest programming productivity with the shortest learning curve. Our eye machining wizard plus our eye machining toolpath is the ultimate solution. Our unique eye machining technology wizard provides optimal feeds and speeds, taking into account the toolpath, stock, and tool materials, as well as machine specifications. Our unique eye machining features are that we use a minimum and maximum cutting angle along with a variable feed rate. We have two modules in eye machining, our intelligent toolpath generator, along with our full featured technology wizard that generates a full suite of feeds and speeds. As mentioned previously, we use variable feed, and this is to keep a constant spindle load on the machine. When we are decreasing the width of cut, we are increasing the feed rate to keep a constant chip thickness, which also keeps a constant load on the spindle. Almost every line of G-code in eye machining will have its own feed rate. Two additional patented features of eye machining is our morph spirals, which is only found in eye machining, and our intelligent separation. The combination of these two allow us to take a complex pocket, separate it into individual regions, and then have morphed spiral machining. And morph spirals are the best type of tool path because it keeps the tool in contact with the material and decreases or minimizes the amount of entering and exiting. If we were to take a look at what a typical eye machining might look like for a complex geometry, we can follow along here. So first we start with a morphing spiral. And by morphing, you can see how the shape of this spiral is not a circle. And you can see down at the bottom region, we can see more dense or closely packed toolpath versus the other regions around it, which are more spread out. Once we hit islands, we do what we call separating channels. This takes the islands 
we are able to finish around the islands, and after that, we can return back to our morphing spiral machining. Additionally, as the algorithm is continuing to see different topology during the cutting, it can do a separation island, as we see here, and then it will return back to morph spirals. So the entire goal of the toolpath is maximizing spirals. But iMachining is not just about roughing. iMachining also does rest material and finish cuts. Rest material is generally used where we have regions in the pocket where the larger tool could not fit into. And finishing, we do finishing of walls and floors. An important technology step that we do with finishing walls is that we pre-clean out corners where the tool would over-engage. And what this allows us to do is finish the entire geometry in one step down. Um, this is very unique and it also decreases the cycle time a lot and gives a perfect surface finish in the corner. This also makes a big difference when we have like zero on zero corner radiuses, such as machining a quarter inch radius with a half inch end mill. Here's a part and we can see a few different eye machining tool paths on it for different pockets. The general idea here is we see morphing spirals in the beginning and then we go to, in this case where there's no islands, we just do trochoidal passes clearing out the rest of the geometry. Let's watch a video here on eye machining 2D. So this is a nice eye machining 2D part. Um, we can see the cycle time of 11 and a half minutes. What's really impressive about this part is it looks like you're machining aluminum, when in reality we're machining steel. So here's a morphing eye machining toolpath on the top. Here's our eye finish going around the outside. As you can see, it's doing it in one Z step or one step down. For all closed pockets, we are generally doing helical entry to get into the material, unless you've used pre-drilling. And here you can see some of the characteristics of the cutting. So in this steel, we were cutting at 14,000 RPMs, which is generally considered by many people almost impossible in steel and hard materials. Here we can see the video slowed down to 25%. So you can actually see how eye machining is working and doing its morphing spiral in the center of this pocket. As you can see, it's pretty amazing seeing eye machining in the video. It's even more impressive when you see it in real life. In today's industry and market, mill turn is probably one of the most important subjects because even if you're a customer who only does milling, almost every customer is thinking or wants to get into mill turn. And what's important with mill turn is that our eye machining technology is also adding, I would say even larger benefits in mill turn. Many times in mill turn, what we will see is that the tooling and the lengths of the tools are generally longer and might not be as rigid as what we generally see in a traditional milling or three axis milling operation. So here we have just some, some pre-cutting, which is just general milling. This is not eye machining right here. When we go to the subspindle and the part is transferred, then we'll actually see eye machining cutting. So here's eye machining on a subspindle. And many times the subspindles are not as rigid as the main spindles. So here, this is where eye machining and its constant load toolpath really makes a huge difference. As you can see, this is a simultaneous fourth axis cut. And in mill turn, for anybody that knows mill turn, generally when you're working on the face of the model like this, it's hard to have the complete machine travels to be able to do X, Y cutting to machine on the face of the part. So being able to do fourth axis cutting allows you to keep the tool in the upper quadrant where there's machine travel, and then the vertery axis spins to account for the, the Y axis movement. And as you can see in mill turn, we achieve the same type of results that we achieve even in milling. And generally when you watch most people in mill turn, you generally see them on the milling side do very small depth, even smaller depth of cuts than what we do in traditional milling. A few years after releasing our iMachining 2D technology, we released iMachining 3D. iMachining 3D is utilizing the proven iMachining 2D technology and our technology wizard. 
Now, our iMachining 3D results actually give higher savings than what iMachining 2D is. And this works for 3D surface parts, such as molds and contoured 3D shapes, or prismatic parts, which are basically you know, pockets and islands. We have an optimized machining using Z-step machining, or constant Z machining. And as I said, this is using our iMachining 2D technology for each Z level. We use deep roughing, which utilizes the whole flute length of the tool. And as this is what we do in iMachining 2D, to use this benefit in iMachining 3D, 3D, we use rest material machining, and we do upward steps, which is based on constant scallop height. This shortens the cycle time tremendously and brings the model to a closer net finish. We have intelligent localized machining and optimum ordering. And this is extremely important in 3D machining because a lot of times in 3D machining, CNCs are spending a lot of time moving from one area to the part to the next. And this is what we call like dead time, where the machine is just repositioning and the spindle's not actually cutting. So in iMachining 3D, we've optimized this. We use a true 3D updated stock the entire time, and this eliminates our air cutting. And our tool path is automatically adjusted to avoid contact between holders and the updated stock. And this is really, really important for people that do big parts where they reach down inside of deep cavities. We combine this, combine this with our best in class HSM finishing, and iMachining 3D combined with HSM finish gives the best result for 3D parts. If we walk through some of the things that iMachining 3D does, we can do this now. So the first thing is optimum Z-slice machining. As I said, this uses the 2D iMachining algorithm at each Z level to remove the material. This includes our morphing spiral tool path. Then our 3D algorithm automatically determines what volume to remove at each Z level. And this helps achieve the shortest cycle time. As I mentioned previously, we do deep step down cutting. So if we look at this simple pocket here with these tapered walls, you can see we take a full step down. So this way we can get the largest metal removal rate for the largest area. And then we use our scallop driven step up. And in our scallop driven step up, we automatically adjust and find all the areas of the model with the appropriate down step or step up as we call it to maintain the same scallop height across the entire model. So if we look at the picture here, you can see what this means by scallop height. As you define the surface that you want to machine, which is the blue, we have the surface offset of what we're leaving on the model, and then we have the scallop height. And if you look at the model on the left, you can see for these two tapered walls, on the shallower wall, we have more steps. You can see that I think there's like eight steps there. And then on the right hand, we have the three steps on the more steeper wall. And this is done automatically to give the most optimized machining. So we're not creating additional tool paths. The scallop driven technology is extremely easy to use because it's just a single parameter. There is no guessing on what step down to use to leave the certain amount of material. And by using the scallop height, this generally is replacing multiple operations in a CAM program. That includes roughing, rest roughing, and semi-finish. So in one iMachining 3D operation, we are generally replacing a whole set of tool paths that people do in 3D. And this is where the cycle time savings becomes very large, and we are seeing people who do 90% and up. If you look on a more complex model here, you can see the differences of the step up and how we have different machining on the sloped surfaces. So we do deep depth of cuts, and on every area of this model, you get a localized region of step ups. And an important thing to note about this is our eye machining uses the technology wizard, and we automatically have separate feeds and speeds and engagement angles for each step that we machine. This gives an added benefit that we are increasing the metal removal rate as the step down is decreasing. Repositioning or linking movements is generally a huge problem in 3D machining and especially roughing and rest roughing. You know, generally in, when you do the first tool and you do the first big roughing, the tool is just doing Z slices and it's able to make a pretty optimized 
toolpath from the point of view that there's not a lot of reposition moves. But once you do rest machining, and then you do semi-finish, you spend a lot of time with the tool repositioning from one area to the next. In iMachining 3D, we've developed an entire suite of tool of like technology that when you look at a part like this, there's no retracts at all. There is one entrance into the pocket and it's able to machine all of those different Z levels, keeping the tool down inside the stock with complete collision detection from the holder and the tool. And it does all 3D linkings and the tool just stays down and, and does cutting. In this tool path here, you would actually see G0 movements on the first movement and the last retract, that's it. Everything else is a high feed G1 reposition between the different Z levels. And no air cutting is something we really strive for in iMachining 3D and it's something we're very proud of. As we always talk about rest machining in 3D because generally you are using larger tools and coming back with smaller tools to clean out corners, you can see how optimized our toolpath is here. So just coming back with a smaller tool to clean out the corner, you can see the beauty of our toolpath, how it's able to just start at the very bottom, it does a couple little passes to clean out the corner, steps up, and does the next one. And when you watch this run on the machine, it's almost like watching like a dance or something. It's just so, so smooth and, and elegant to watch the machine just stay in one region, do its cutting, and then move to another part of the model. As I've said before, we do have automatic cutting conditions per Z level. So this is where we rerun the technology wizard. So that way on each step up or each depth of cut, we recalculate what would be the optimum cutting angles and metal removal rates. And then we also adjust the feed rate because the feed rate will change for the engagement angle or cutting angle or step over. And this is done automatically without the user having to do any of this. Tangency and smoothness of the tool path is critical, which is why we use more spirals, but the lead in and lead outs are also critical. And this is done automatically in the iMachining 3D technology. Every lead in and lead out is automatically adjusted for that area of the model, and it gives a smooth transition from one area to the next. And this is increasing tool life and machine life because the most, some of the most difficult or wear inducive times and shocking times for the tool is the entrance and exiting of material. Now we talked a lot about the technology and the tool path, but a major problem with using any tool path at all is calculating feeds and speeds. And this was something from the beginning of us doing our test cutting with iMachining that we realized we needed to provide a solution to our customers that would allow them to use iMachining as a tool and it would be as easy or easier than any software that they already use. So let's talk about feeds and speeds and what we as CAM programmers have to figure out. When we look at generating a feed and speed for some part, we have to look at the material we're cutting, what tool we're using, the geometry we're machining, and then the machine it's actually being cut on. And there's many parameters for each of these things. We can see many parameters for each of these different categories. And this is kind of like an algorithm that us as CAM programmers do inside of our own head. So we are taking into account all of these things with the hardness, with the step over, the number of flutes, what is the maximum spindle speed of the machine, what's the maximum feed rates. And us as CAM programmers, we have to take into account all of that to generate some feed and speed. We've solved this by having an iMachining technology wizard. So this is an algorithm that takes in all of those parameters of the machine, the material, the geometry, and the tool, and we generate a set of feed rates, step overs, and spindle speeds, and depth of cuts that are synchronized, and more importantly, are fit to the machine and the limitations of that machine. And we don't just generate a single feed and speed, we generate a set of these and we have what we call the iMachining slider. The iMachining slider allows you to choose between eight different machining levels with level one being the minimum metal removal rate and level eight being the highest metal removal rate. And essentially we can think of this as cutting force. So level one would be the least amount of cutting force on your cutting and level eight would be the highest. 
This gives us as an end user the ability to say, okay, I have my part, it's fixtured very well, um, the, it's, it's, it's a, not, a very long, not a very tall part, my tool is short, I can use level eight. But then if you go to a part where you think you aren't holding it as well, you know, there is a big difference between holding a part with 200 thou in a vise and only being able to grip on like 50 thou. So the iMachining Technology Wizard and its slider allows you as the programmer to adjust what feed and speed you want to use, but you're not actually typing and figuring out, oh, well, I need less force, so I need to change this RPM, this feed rate, and this chip thickness. The iMachining Technology Wizard gives it to you automatically. An important tool or byproduct of iMachining is anti-vibration technology. And this is our axial contact points. What this is is that when we cut deep with a helical end mill, we are able to provide stability in the cutting by having multiple teeth in contact at one time. I like to talk about this in the scenario of a face mill. So if we think of a face mill, when a face mill is starting to enter the cut, we know that it makes the dunk, dunk, dunk sound of each flute making contact. Once the face mill gets buried into the material, it quiets up and we just hear the zzzz of the sound of the face mill cutting. And then when it leaves the material, we hear the, the dunk, dunk, dunk again. And when you look at a part, for face milling, we see that in the beginning, there is a different wave to the surface finish, and then through the entire path, and then at the end, we see that wave again. That same thing where you have the inserts of a face mill, where it quiets up when you get multiple teeth in contact, this happens in, ax in the axial depth of cut using helical end mills. The eye machining wizard is automatically analyzing this, and we are able to provide feedback if you are going to have excess vibration to allow you to either change to a different tool or do something different if you choose to. We have four patents for our eye machining technology, and this is extremely unique. This is covering our eye machining 2D and 3D. Now in the end, eye machining 2D and eye machining 3D is all about the savings at the machine. So we have a few examples here of different types of savings. So here's a customer who produces aluminum parts. Um, they make electronic housings. And here's a simple part in 6061. And many times people think, oh, I cut aluminum. I am already cutting as fast as I can. I cut at the maximum RPM of my machine. I cut at practically the maximum feed rate. And there's nothing that iMachining can do. Well, we can see here, even on this simple part, it's not something complex or very tall or deep, we were able to take a standard cutting time of 17 minutes and lower that down to six minutes, which is a 65% savings. And an important thing we like to talk about is the total cycle time savings for lot runs. So for 400 pieces, this is 73 hours of saved machining time. Here's a simple bracket in, two, in titanium. So this customer had 75 pieces to machine. Kind of ironic, it's around the same similar time as the larger aluminum part we solved, which is 17 minutes. Here, we lowered their cycle time down to three and a half minutes. The savings is 80%. And most important with, or not most important, but also important is the tool life savings. Generally, these customers machining titanium are only getting few minutes worth of cutting. So this part, they were probably replacing the end mill on each part. In iMachining, we're able to get, we extend the tool life longer than the 17 minutes, which is basically getting you more machining per tool. Many customers, or most of our customers, are using a combination of iMachining 2D and 3D. So here, this is a customer who uses both of these modules, mostly in aluminum for multi-sided work. And here you can see they're generally receiving 65 to 75% cycle time savings. I'm machining 3D in steel. This is for this customer here who's machining 1020. With a 12 millimeter tool and just I'm machining level five, we took a cycle time from 146 minutes down to 28 minutes. And as I mentioned previously, the model is in a closer surface finish and better quality for the following operations for finishing. So we saved 81% cycle time in this 
and the model is a better, in a better state to start doing finishing. We can take a look at what iMachining 3D actually looks like on a complex shape. So here, when you look at the steps on this model, you can see here's a part where there's varying slopes, there's some vertical, near vertical walls, there's different, different slopes all over. Here we can see it starting from doing it in the deep depth of cut. So this is where we get the largest, the largest amount of material removal rate. Using the 2D eye machining is basically each pattern. And then we do step up cutting. So here we can see it's doing just little areas and stepping upward up the model to, to attain the scallop height that we selected. And as you can see, it's basically when it does step up, it's doing, in a, in a model like this, it's doing very small cutting and generally lots of the corners and things like that. And this is something where you would need semi-finish operations to try to clean out those corners afterwards. But iMachining 3D does it automatically. Combining iMachining with our simultaneous five-axis machining is something we're seeing with most of our customers who do five-axis simultaneous. We can use iMachining 3D technology to do all the roughing before we go to five-axis finishing. So here's an impeller, which is generally a pretty difficult part to machine. So as we can see, this is a pretty tall part. So this is, I mean, as you, it's a very deep depth of cut. And you can see iMachining just eating away the material like it's nothing. We do our deep depth of cut first, as always, using the flute length of the tool. And then we start working upwards the model using our step up. And what you're gonna see when this is done is basically like a flower kind of looking part because that's what the roughing will look like once we get done roughing all the impellers. As you can see, you get spiral machining even on this part. As it's machining upward and upward, we are getting closer and closer to the roughed shape or the rough envelope of what the impeller looks like. In this case, we're using five axis simultaneous to do the finishing on the top of each of the ribs and also for doing the roughing or the slotting in between each of the ribs. I always think five axis impeller machining is some of the most interesting cutting to watch run on a machine. Since I'm from the US, I'd like to mention quickly our eye machining in the US and, and what we do. Um, pretty much we push for every single seat to include eye machining. And as you can see by our customer adoption rates, eye machining 2D is sold with 84% of our sales and our machining 3D is 55% respectively. Customers who use eye machining are using it on every part. And we find that our customers are happier with less stress when using eye machining. And we have seen from many customers, they tackle new materials that they generally would not tackle in the past. And I think this goes with the less stress. They don't feel as stressed when taking on some material they've never machined before because iMachining just manages it automatically for them. SolidWorks SolidCam and iMachining is the best integrated CAD CAM solution. Not too many people learn about iMachining because it is my biggest Edge. I think he says it better than uh, anybody why everyone needs to have eye machining. Eye machining truly is the technology that will change your shop. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Anthony. That was a very interesting presentation. Thank you. I mean, I always love hearing about eye machining. And three questions have already come in from the attendees. So the first question is, if we already use SolidCAM, will we require additional training to use eye machining? That is a great question. 
So additional training is definitely not required, and in many cases, it is much easier than existing operations in SolidCam. However, training can always be helpful to learn methods and optimize iMachining as well as best practices from our technical staff. Okay. The, qu the second question is, do I need to buy special tooling to use iMachining? No, special tooling is not required, but recommended tooling is solid carbide end mills. Additionally, many tooling manufacturers have created specialized tools with flute designs and cutting edges that provide additional performance when used with iMachining. Okay, and the last question is, with faster cutting of iMachining, does this cause faster wear and tear to my CNC machine? Great question. In fact, this comes up a lot. And no, in fact, iMachining constant load cutting causes decreased wear in CNCs, especially on spindle forces. By having constant spindle load with no spikes, the forces acting on the spindle are minimized. Fantastic. So that does it. And thank you very much. You're welcome.